Assalamualaikum warahmatullah. I know that uh, we would be having this program while you are eating to save time. I request uh, Mukarram Khamis Sahib, uh, President of uh, Ottawa Westmark, to please recite. And we have made you into tribes and sub-tribes that you may recognize one another. <clears throat> Verily, the most honorable among you in the sight of Allah is he who is most righteous among you. Surely, Allah is all-knowing, all-aware. Salaam alaikum. Uh, one quick uh, could you please switch off the mic in the lady's side? We are hearing the noise. That mic is provided for question and answer only. That is why the sound is coming in here. Switch off the mic, please. Yes, please. Okay. So, uh, Amisha, now just welcome everyone, and then he will start with the presentation. Okay. Uh, all the attendees are welcome in this program, and I request uh, Tommy Kalu Sahib to please uh, make his presentation. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Jazakumullah, respected Amir Sahib, and all members, it is my honor and pleasure to be here with you with the gracious approval of Hazrat Khalifa Tumasi. I'm going to be taking you through uh, an introduction to the Pan African Ahmadiyya Muslim Association. It is uh, an elaborate presentation to give you a background about the organization, the structure, the history, the achievements of Parma so far. So please bear with me because time is very limited. I may have to speed up through the presentation, but I'll try to, inshallah, cover all the slides. So without any further ado, this will the contents we'll be covering, the overview, the brief history, the mission of Palma, the aims and objectives, the organization and structure, and major, major achievements to date. By way of background, Palma, the Pan-African Madia Muslim Association, was established and named by Hazrat Khalifa Tumasi IV, Wahimullah Ta'ala. It is a subsidiary association within the Jamaat, not a desk. A desk, as you know, traditionally exists for tablik purposes. So if you have like a Bengali desk, it will be under the tablik department, mainly for tablik purposes. Palma is a subsidiary organization. It is an association, so it has a full mandate, a wider mandate than um, a, a desk done for tablik, as we'll inshallah soon see. Also, it is a subsidiary, not, a, not an auxiliary organization. So it's in, that, in that respect, it differs from Kudam, Ansa, and Lajna because they have separate budgeting and they have separate membership, collection, membership subscriptions. Palma exists as a cost center within the main Jamaat, so we get all our funding from the main UK Jamaat, uh, for the Palma UK and Palma USA gets their funding from the main USA Jamaat, so it differs in that, in that respect. So it has its own national executive and it has a larger structure, a parallel larger large structure to complement the gents and also has a regional structure similar to the Jamaat or where there, there are less members, we combine a few Palma regions, Palma a few Jamaat regions to, to, to form one Palma region. It is comprised of all African Ahmadis of African origin, and I will explain momentarily what origin means, what African origin means. And also, this is very important to note that it is a diaspora organization, not for within Africa, because so many times I get questions from members in Africa, how can I become a member of the Pan-African Association? Pan-African, the word pan itself means across the whole of Africa. So it, it, it wouldn't make much sense to have a Pan-African Association in Sierra Leone, in Gambia, in Nigeria, or Ghana, where the majority, 99% of the members are Ghanaian or Nigerian or Sierra Leonean, not from across Africa. And the, those who are not from the Jamaat, those who are not Sierra Leonean in Sierra Leone, who are not Ghanaian in Ghana, 
uh, most likely Pakistanis anyway. So it doesn't make sense. I mean, there is one exception in South Africa, and we're joined here by Tofik Hage, who is the Officer Jalsa, Salah, Officer Jalsa Ga, and I was there recently for the Jalsa, and um, South Africa, as an exception, has members from across Africa, as opposed to different countries, but if, given that it is still within Africa, Parma is not going to be established there. It is for the diaspora, so outside of Africa, Canada, USA, UK, across Europe, and Australia eventually, inshallah. So by way of history, a brief history, Parma was founded in 1986, so it has been going actually for 32 years, even though mostly in, in the UK. It was established by Huzur Akdas, as I just mentioned. Ismail Biki Ado Sahib, as you may know, was the first chairman of Parma, and he served in his capacity for well over 20 years. He recently passed away uh, a few months ago, and Huzur led his uh, Janaz Agaib, as you, as you would have heard. And also upon, upon, his, upon his demise, uh, with Huzur's gracious approval, we launched an, an award, an educational award in, in his name as well. So now the Ismail Bike Award is awarded to students of African origin who achieve excellence in their academic careers. In 2006, after um, I was retired, I went back to Africa. Then Issa Wema Sahib served for five years as the second chairman of Parma. And then my humble self was appointed by Huzur Agdas in 2014, and I've since served in that capacity. Again, by way of history, last year, Parma was established for the first time outside of the UK, first in Italy in July 2017. And Ibrahim Ismail Sahib was appointed the first president. And then in the USA in July last year, and Imam Abdullah Diba Sahib was appointed the first president of Parma USA. And then in last October, it was established in Belgium. Um, and then Mohammed Al Ghazawi Sahib was appointed the first president. And this year, today, we're launching by the grace of Allah and with Huzu's blessed approval, Parma, Parma Canada. And next weekend as well, I'm going to be in France with the launch of Parma France. And inshallah, in, in, in September, at Jazz Salama, Germany as well, for the launch of Parma Germany. So it is my, with Huzu's blessings and, and guidance, that inshallah, by the end of this year, we'll have six chapters established outside of the UK to complement the UK structure. So what are the mission, aims, and objectives of Parma? The mission statement of Parma in one sentence is to unite, empower, and inspire the African Ahmadiyya diaspora to serve Islam, society, and Africa. So that's our mandate. It is wide ranging. It gives us, it gives us, it unites us, brings us all together because the question was asked, why, why establish a Pan-African association when there is a Mauritian community, there's a Ghanaian community, there's various communities. What's the point of having a Parma? Well, when you unite all Africans together, the whole is much better than the sum of its parts. So when we unite, it empowers us and also gives us a platform. And through that, members become inspired. And, and as you, inshallah, soon see, there's lots of achievements that can be done when you come together, you empower people, and you inspire them to serve Islam, society, and Africa. So based on that um, mission statement, these are our brief aims, broad aims, as you say, to raise the flag of Ahmadiyyat throughout the continent of Africa. It is to unite African Ahmadis in the diaspora under one umbrella association, to keep African Ahmadi Muslims in the diaspora attached to the Jamaat, and finally, to provide a platform to engage and exchange ideas with other Africans. Broad objectives is to oversee the educational and social welfare of its members, to inculcate moral and spiritual values throughout, through religious and secular activities, to seek out the lost lions of Africa and bring them back to the fold of the Jamaat. This is an interesting phrase. This phrase was actually given to us by Huzur Agdas himself when he first established Parma. This is the fourth caliph I'm talking about. When he established Parma, he, he, called, he, he gave us the mandate to bring back those lost lions of Africa. Now, as you may know, Jesus Christ, may peace be upon him, referred, he described his mission as so, um, to seek out the lost sheep of the house of Israel. It is, it is, I take pride in this, that when our Khalifa gave us a mandate, he, did, he referred to us not as sheep, but as lions of, of Africa. This, of course, gives us, um, if it befalls upon us then to use, to become lion-hearted in, in the fulfillment of all objectives for which Palmer was founded. Fourthly, to enlighten the people of Africa about the faith and secular matters, to propagate the message of Islam and Ahmadiyyat to Africans. So those are the broad objectives. In terms of organizational structure, so I'll take you through the administration, appointments, how they are made, the, co the, co the composition mostly of the UK, UK um, Palm Association currently, and the membership, who is a member of Palmer and who is not a member of Palmer. So by way of organizational structure, Palmer has, um, as, as its organizational apex, a president, 
assisted by vice presidents, as many as, as required. It also has 14 departments approved by Huzu actors, General Secretary, Tab Tabiat, Tab Tajnid, Klimatikag, Finance, Ishat, New Amadis, Rishtanata, Tablig, External Affairs, Atfal, Talim, Internal Affairs, Sports Secretary. It has a regional structure based on the Jama structure, whatever country it's establishing. We have six, uh, six regions in Parma because uh, we just have a Parma East, West, North and South, London and Midlands. Even though the Jamaat itself has 15, 15 regions, but we combine because our members are dispersed, we combine a few regions to form one, one, um, one Parma region. It also has a, a, a head of Lajna who reports into the president and she heads the Lajna structure. As I said, there's a parallel Lajna structure. Again, it's headed by the head of Lajna for Parma who reports into the president. She also has deputy heads of Lajna and again, all the 14 departments. And those are, as I will soon say, they just complement the Jamaat. So the, the Parma tablik sector will do exactly what the Jamaat or, or Kudam Lamadia tablik sector will do. And again, there's a regional structure. Again, so for every, at every level, there's a, there's a president for Parma and the head of Lajna. They work together. There's the deputy heads, they work together. A general secretary across both, both um, gents and ladies. And again, there's a regional president for Parma. And there's also the regional head of Lajna. And they also have their, their own regional executives. So all of them, everything complements each other. So in terms of rules and responsibilities, just I won't take you through this because of time. But again, as I just mentioned, a general secretary for Parma will do exactly what a general secretary for Jamaat will do. So there are 14 departments and all the roles and responsibilities are defined for those members. So in terms of appointments, the president itself is, is elected by Palmas and approved by Huzur Akhdas. And, that's a, uh, and, that, and um, the national executive is then appointed, nominated, as you say, by the president, and that's approved by Huzur Akhdas as well. The regional presidents, again, are nominated by the president and approved by Huzur Akhdas. The head of Lajna is nominated by the president and approved by Huzur Akhdas. The regional executives are nominated by the regional presidents and approved by the president. The Lajna executive is nominated by the head of Lajna and approved by the president. Oops, sorry. Wrong one. And finally, the Lajna regional executives are nominated by the regional heads of Lajna, and in this case, they are approved by the head of Lajna. In terms of tenure, the president is elected every two years under Husu's instructions, and the, the, uh, the other office bearers are nominated annually, as the case may be. In terms of membership, so who's a member of Parma and who's not a member of Parma? Here it comes. So as you may know already, in terms of membership, all indigenous Africans, without, it goes without saying, all North Africans, so all the Arabs, Morocco, Tunisia, Egypt, um, all these countries where obviously they're in, they're in Africa, so they belong to Parma. Mauritians, obviously, most people have to define this. We shouldn't have to say this, but Mauritius is part of Africa, part of the 54 countries of Africa, and they're, they're also uh, mem members of Parma. Of course, African-Americans as well, originally from Africa. This is this what I mean by African origin. So not those who just come recently from Africa. Even those eventually in Brazil and places like this, we're going to, inshallah, inculcate them, assimilate them into Parma. But obviously, once the Jamaat is fully established in these places, and we have a lot of bias from there. So African-Americans, even though they've, they, they lived in Africa, they grew up, born many generations in, in, um, in, in the USA. But because they're originally from Africa, they included them in Parma. And also, of course, those members of the Caribbean, who are, again, who are originally of African origin, and they now reside, born and bred in the Caribbean. In terms of exclusions, this is important as well. So who's not a member of Parma? So all Indian nationals who are born in Africa and all Pakistani nationals who are born in Africa. And this is, this is given to us by Huzu Akhdas himself. I know this is a bit contentious because a lot of, Africa, a lot of uh, in, Indian and Pakistanis who are born in Africa. In the UK, we have even our Amir Sahib UK is born in Africa and a whole Mem so many members are born in Africa and they want to be a part of, part of Parma. And of course, we welcome them to Parma. We work together. They support us in everything we do. But in terms of counting the Tajneed, we don't count them because on, the, on Huzu's instruction, otherwise Huzu said himself, his own son, Mia Wakas, was also born in Ghana. So Huzu said, otherwise Mia Wakas, otherwise Wakas would also be a one of your members. So Huzu excluded all um, Indians and, and Pakistanis who are born in Africa. And there's reason behind that because obviously, the majority of the Jamaat. If, if, all, if, if, if we allow all Indians and Pakistanis to come into Parma, they're going to take over, the, take, and Parma will lose the purpose anyway. So, so it will be diluted in terms of impact. So for this reason, Huzu, in his wisdom, has excluded all his members. Even though, like I said, we do work together in terms of projects we're running, fundraising, and so many other things we do. They do support us. We work together in many respects. But in terms of counting the such need, we don't include those. And the same applies for spouses. 
for spouses as well, those, those of our members who are married to non-Africans, again, they welcome the farmer family, they attend all events, they participate in any ishtima, we're having competitions, everything they can do, picnics, whatever events, but in terms of counting, it's such need for, purpose, for, for um, statistical purposes, we don't ex include them, otherwise the most welcome in every, in every other respect. So this is a current uh, composition by Tanzim in the UK. So we have currently um, about 219 Ansar, 63 Atfal, 187 Kudam, 382 Lajna, 76 Nasivas, and girls and boys, 35 and 39 respectively. Girls and boys are those, mem those who have not yet joined Atfal or Nasivat, so those under the age of seven who class them as boys, aims class them as boys and girls. In terms of by region, that's a brief um, um, breakdown by region there, but this is only for the UK obviously. And again, by origin, again, and this is the reason why we cannot include those spouses who are not, who are not born in Africa, because obviously we cannot allocate them to any country uh, who, from Africa. So this is just a composition. Majority of our members are from Ghana. Um, so I'm struggling to see this presentation here. I think Mauritius is the second most populous than Nigeria. So those are the three largest communities in the UK, Ghana, Mauritius, and Nigeria. And, that's, and we have a few civil unions like myself floating about and a few other nationalities. So in terms of major achievements, we just go through brief initiatives launched by Parma, some publications we've done, we've done um, resources where you can find more information about Parma, and then some events, finally some events which we've managed to hold by the grace of Allah. So in terms of initiatives, we have every year, as I mean, we know, uh, we've launched uh, merit awards, um, we've done charity work, we've done most projects as well. So in terms of merit awards, we have what we call the Abdul Wahab Adam Award. This, this is awarded to African missionaries who have served with, with distinction. This starts in 2014 on the demise of um, our most beloved Amir Sab in Ghana. So with Husus blessings, we name this award after him, and this has been awarded every year annually to missionaries. So this is to commemorate his memory and also to inspire African missionaries to follow in the, in the illustrious footsteps of the late Molana Abdul Wahab Adam Sahib. The second award we launch is uh, the Abdul Rahim Neya Award. As you may know, um, Abdul Rahim Neya actually was not the first missionary to, to Africa. The first missionary was, in fact, um, Sufi Gulam Ahmad, I think Sufi Gulam Muhammad, who, who arrived in Mauritius in, 2000, in 1915. But obviously, when I discussed with Huzu, we felt that because um, Abdul Rahim Neya Sahib was a pioneer in more than one country in Nigeria, Sierra Leone, and Ghana. I don't know which order. I think Ghana first, Nigeria, then Sierra Leone in that order. And because of his pioneer services, Huzu thought it was befitting to name the award after him, even though he wasn't the first missionary or such. So it's named after him. Again, it commemorates his memories and, and services, and it, it is to inspire missionaries of non-African origin to uh, follow in his footsteps. So this award is to non-African missionaries. So those of our, of our missionaries who are serving in Africa, who are not from Africa, we award them this every year. And just before I arrived, Huzu, Huzu approved the um, six awardees for this year, three Abdul Rahim Nia awardees, and uh, also three Abdul Rahim, Abdul Wahab Adam awardees, who will be awarded just at our Palmer reception at Jaza Salana. So we have run a Water for Life campaign where we work with Humanity First. We raise um, a total of nearly 20,000 pounds for Water for Life projects. As you may know, you're from Africa, you know a lot of uh, indigenous communities have, sort of, um, have no access to sustainable water, clean water supply. So we, we again, through Humanity First and IEEE, we worked with them and uh, we raised funds for, to, to provide these communities with water. Again, we do a Gift of Sight campaign, again, through Humanity First. We raise about 10,000 pounds for this. Um, through uh, uh, Ramadan appeal. Most projects, by the grace of Allah, we completed two projects in Africa, one in Burkina Faso and one in Benin, and who's only a few months ago, a few weeks ago, actually named the second mosque Masjid Bashir. So who's named the first one Masjid Nasser in Burkina Faso, and he named the second one Masjid Bashir and, in Benin. And this is actually named on two separate occasions without, without Without any connection, who's who named this first one about two years ago, or a year ago, and then one and a half years ago, and then when I went to him this year, without looking, just named it Bashir, and it instantly con connected Nasser and Bashir. Without it's amazing how it actually works. So it, this again proves that Huzu is divinely inspired. In terms of publications, we have our uh, so we have newsletter, we have done exhibitions, brochures, and press releases. So in terms of our publications, we have our newsletter. It's Huzu named it Pan-African News. So this is our latest edition. It's actually a review of 2017 year. Again, so it, it, we produce this quarterly. And this was a, a special edition, which we did for the, for the 2017 year, 17 year. So we have information brochure. Again, just give background information about Palmer. 
It's available on, on, on our website, as I'll soon come to. We, uh, Huzu, um, in 2010, 11, and 13, Palmer held a series of Africa at 50 events. This was, this was to commemorate the 50th and independence anniversaries of various African states. Huzu graces occasions on, on all three occasions and delivered a keynote address on protect, protecting Africa's freedom, services to the cause of Ahmadiyya, services of Ahmadiyya in the, to the cause of Africa, and Africa's true independence. We we'll compile this into a special brochure and publish those for, for the purposes of um, um, publicizing Huzu's wisdom. Exhibitions, again, we have various exhibitions. This is just a, a, a sub, uh, sample of some exhibitions we've done, again, just to give some information about Parma. The last one is an interesting one. Is, uh, so I have my mouse, or so the mouse is there. These are quotations from various leaders, what they say about, um, about Jamal. It's very interesting if you can read that. Press releases, again, whenever we do events on whose uh, guidance was to make sure you have a press release for that. So whenever we hold a major event, we do press releases, and we have a series of um, standard African outlets, newspapers who publish our, our um, releases. In terms of resources, so we have a website, we have a Twitter account, it's Instagram account, Facebook, and YouTube account. These are, by the grace of Allah, very active. Our website um, is um, palma.org.uk, so we can visit that to get more information about Palma. Again, we have a Twitter account, currently about over 3,000 followers, very active account. Again, want to, definitely want to follow there. Please, sir. Thank you. Uh, we, have, we have Instagram accounts, about 1,000 followers on that. Again, Palmer underscore UK. Uh, Twitter, Twitter was again Palmer underscore UK. And then same handle for Instagram, Palmer underscore UK. For Facebook, it's Palmer UK. And again, we have about 7,500 followers there. And then finally, for YouTube, not so many followers as it goes, only about 70 subscribers for now. We need to do something about that. But if you search for Palmer videos, you'll find our YouTube channel. And again, that contains a repository for all our online videos. In terms of events, internal and external events, we'll go through those briefly. Um, again, as I mentioned, we have a traditional post just as reception, and this is where we, we give the awards. We've had a Africa 50 event, where again, Huzu came and met, we had invited a series of ambassadors and high commissioners of various African states to come and um, grace this occasion, and Huzu delivered the keynote address, as I just mentioned. Uh, every year we have what we call the Eid Milan Family Picnic. We hold this at Jamia UK. We bring all members together. We have some spiritual guidance, some, some key Jamaat members, and then we break out into fun and games for all the Palmer members. We, again, we have a Pan African Evening event at Jazza Solana. We will bring together the, the global Palmer family on one, on one evening. We have um, various speeches, and then we have dinner together, create a spirit of brotherhood and sisterhood among our members. And all these events are for both men and women, so all, all gents and ladies are all invited to this. And, we, and um, again, we have a joint events, so even though large, as you soon see, have the separate events as well where required. So again, we have a, we had a commemorative event when our late Molana Sa passed away. So again, on Huzu's instruction, that year we changed the Jalsa reception to a commemorative event on Huzu's instructions. Merit Award Ceremony, again, this happens at the post jasa reception where we've awarded the Abdul Wahab Adam Award to various missionaries of African origin who have served the Jamaat with distinction and credit. Again, at a, this was in 2015, we celebrated the Mauritius centenary, and it was the first African country to, meet, to reach the milestone of 100 years of Ahmadiyyat in, in Mauritius, and hence Africa. Again, we had a special comm commemorative event to, to, uh, to commemorate that, and again, that followed from that was the Nigeria centenary in 2016, which again, we held in the UK, we brought together the Nigerian diaspora and our Palma members to commemorate this milestone. Conference of World Religions we held in Birmingham, you know, brought together faith leaders of various faiths and, and just sort of post, uh, discuss and pursue avenues to achieve peace from various scriptures. Q introduction to Islam and question answer session with our respected Imam Sahib, being invited guests who are, want to know a bit more about, it, about the community. And again, they, again, we're just giving a platform to ask questions and get the answers. Talim and Tabiat Forum, this is an educational and spiritual training camp for those of our guests who may not know what this is. So again, we have this. Uh, various forums for this. MT Africa, even though it doesn't strictly come under Palmer, but because it's based in the UK and, and they need our members to participate in these events, our children mostly take part in the MTA children's program, so we're going to work very closely with MT Africa. 
an Apama Ishtima on, on, and two years ago we started having, holding a dedicated Apama Ishtima on Huzu's uh, approval. It's again to bring all the Palma members, give them opportunity to compete with each other, each other in various speech, uh, academic and sporting competitions. Last year we, we held our first landmark Africa Peace Symposium. We were brought together again various faith community leaders, ambassadors, high commissioners, members of parliament, and now uh, we, held, we held a special peace symposium exploring again avenues for achieving peace with a focus on the African community. As I mentioned before, Lajna themselves hold a dedicated Lajna event, and again, they've had various fun days, uh, various trips for Nasiva to museums, to fun parks, to theme parks, and bring whole exhibitions as well. So the ladies themselves, for those of us, Lajna is the ladies, ladies association, and they have the separate events as well. Even though we do hold joint events, but where required, they hold a separate events. So last year, as I mentioned, we launched Parma Italy. Again, that was another um, milestone to achieve and a very major, major event. Following from that, we launched Parma Belgium, as I mentioned as well. And then finally, we launched Parma USA as well, in the grace of Allah. This year, with Huzu's approval, Huzu, um, we established a Parma football club. Huzu named it Parma Stars FC. So again, we participated in the first European football tournament that was held in, in the UK this year. And we're now really lost in the groups, but um, inshallah football is coming home because this year England just won the semi-finals today. It's a blessed day, historic day. So football is coming home to England. They just won the quarter <laughs> Won the quarter <laughs> won the semi-finals. So. They, they will win that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so inshallah. So anyway, those of you who play football, if you're interested in next year, the, this, this event is going to be held uh, regularly. So if those of you play football regularly, not just average footballers, we're looking for the best of the best. So if you play football regularly, please reach out to me and we'll see how best we can incorporate you into the Palm of Stars FC. And following from that, again, Huzu actually instructed us to also form a cricket team, which we call Palma All Stars. And this year, again, we participated for the first time in the, uh, the Masu International Cricket Tournament, which is an annual event. It's been going for many years now, but this year, for the first time, Palma participates, participated in that. And with Huzu's blessed approval, we are six members from Trinidad and Tobago joined the Palma team this year. So, in terms of the impact of Palma, what has been the impact of Palma? So in summary, I hope you can see that. So Palma is really, there are many, just to summarize, it's, it's a really enhanced spirit of brotherhood and sisterhood among Palma members, among African members. It's developed, it helps us to develop leaders at all levels, national, regional, and local as well. It's given more, it give, it given us a platform for more involvement in the Jamaat because the Jamaat is predominantly Pakistani. And because we're in a minority, we, members do not have the opportunity to become office holders and become active Ahmadis. So through Palma, they can become active Ahmadis as such, and they have, they have a sense of belonging, sense of ownership, and they want to serve the Jamaat. And again, that, that gives them a great attachment to the wider Jamaat, and which increases the attendance at Jamaat and, and auxiliary events, which again enhances the spirit of brotherhood and sisterhood. So what I'm trying to depict in this, in this is a virtual circle of, of blessings, which has been the impact of Palma. And finally, by way of epilogue, all progress has been, by the grace of Allah, progress has been made in all directions, and foundations have been laid which should inspire members to greater heights. But there is significant scope for our achievements on many, many fronts. I mean, it will take us a, 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 a long time to go through the scope, what we can achieve when we come together. There's so much room for, for growth, for development, for achievements when we come together as Africans to serve our community and our, our Jamaat. But all progress has been due to the perpetual guidance, prayers, and blessings of Khilafat. And this is the most important thing we should take away from this. At every single step of the way, Huzu, and from the very beginning, he opened his, his doors to me and says, whenever I want, come see me for guidance. Even, even in terms of, even though we're, 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 budget, we're financed by, U, by the UK Jamaat, like I mentioned, Huzu said, where you do not have enough funds from UK Jamaat, come to me and I'll provide the funds for you. So this is the level of interest which Huzu has given to Palmer. So he's, he's supported us fully, and every single, uh, I have access to him, I have mulakat with him, I have audience with him regularly where he gives me guidance, direct guidance even. I'm going to hold, I'm going to go through a process now. This is the reason why I asked Kudaman and Sal to, Kudaman and Sal to sit separately. And when I go back to him, I'm going to meet, meet with him and give him the results of those, um, of this meeting, the reports of this meeting for him to uh, give, give his further instructions on that. So the point is all, at every single step of the way, we meet Huzu and get his guidance on this, on, on Palma, on every single, and, and, through, and through his blessings, through the blessings of Khilafat, we've made progress in this association. Finally, all praise belongs to Allah, Lord of all the worlds. Jazakumullah. So like I mentioned, um,
to address? Well, let me do election first. Uh, again, whichever you normally do. I mean, You'll do election first then. Okay, so. Right, I don't excuse myself. Okay, no problem. Thank you very much. Anything else? Okay, thank you very much. 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 So now here's the reason why I asked Kudam and Atfal and Ansar to sit separately and, and, and Atfal and um, guests to sit separately because what we need to do now is to hold elections for the office of President of Parma Canada and then I'll take the results of those elections to Husser Agdassar for him to appoint the first President of Parma Canada. So can I confirm that all, all African Parma members are seated on my right? If you are Kudam or Ansar, please move to this block so we can count the number of voting members. Lajna and, uh, and, and uh, Atfal, please bear with us. We will go through this process very quickly. I will just simply read out some rules and regulations, and then we'll, um, yeah, then we'll proceed with the, with the elections. So these are some, these are some summarized rules for um, Palmer, the election of Palmer president, because it's your first time, we're taking out some rules which apply to the re-elections, et cetera. So I just read this out briefly, and then, but two things I want to say um, before, we go in, before I read the rules of elections. As you know, in any Jamaat elections, we're not making a final decision here today. We're only making a recommendation. Whatever the results of this election is not final. Whoever gets the, 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 the maximum votes is not relevant for now, because Hasvat Khalifa Masi has the right to overrule the mandate the recommendation of the members and make his own appointment where he feels um, a change is required or if he wants to go with a different, and uh, that's there's precedence for that even at the time of my appointment, I did not get the highest votes, but who's appointed me instead of the person who got highest votes. So just to say that we're making a recommendation only. Our, our voting is, for, is for only a recommendation. The final decision is for Khalifa Tomasi. So please bear that in mind, that's important. Second thing I want to mention, but uh, Jamaat elections, it should be, it is, as you know, based on taqwa and taqwa only. This is the only criteria. The only criteria should bear in mind. Even if you know somebody, um, if, you have, if you're not on good terms with anybody for whatever reason, there is some issues between you, but if you know in your heart of us that that person is best suited for the office of president, you're duty bound in sight of Allah to vote for him. So don't vote by nationality, by favoritism, by any other factor, any other cultural issue or um, factors. The only thing you should bear in mind is taqwa. So please bear in mind, your, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a trust which Allah places in your hands, as the Holy Quran tells us, you have to discharge that trust with absolute justice. So without any further ado, I read the rules and regulations. One, all Qudam and Ansar members of the Pan-African and Madhya Muslim Association present for the election are eligible to vote in the election, in the election of the office of president. Let me just give a copy. Two, there is no minimum prescribed quorum for the election meeting. Three, it shall, be necessary, it shall be necessary for at least three names are proposed for the office of president. Four, any action which is aimed at influencing opinion in favor of or against an individual shall be considered propaganda and disallowed. However, it is considered appropriate with the express permission of the election chairman, of the election meeting chairman, to say a few words in favor of an individual during the election meeting if desired. Adverse remarks against anyone are not permitted in any shape or form. Five, an individual can neither propose his own, his own name nor can he vote for himself. Six, for each name proposed, there should be someone who seconds the nomination. And if no such person is found, the name shall, shall not be put forward for voting. Seven, voting shall be by an open show of hands. Eight, all eligible voters must cast one vote in favor of a candidate. No one is allowed to abstain. Nine, members should vote for such members who are, who as far as they are aware, are sincere and righteous men of sound judgment, regular in prayers, regular in payments of financial contributions, and preferably are Muslims. Ten, the presiding officer must ensure that the votes cast for each candidate agree in aggregate, in aggregate to the number of votes, voters present. And finally, number 11, an election report consisting of the total number of voters present at the election meeting, the proposed candidates, and the number of votes cast in favor of each candidate proposed shall be submitted to Hazrat 
Halifax Masi, Ayadola, Tala bin Asmil Aziz for approval. So those are the uh, brief, those are the 11 rules and regulations for, the, for this election meeting. Can I have uh, somebody to, are you, are you, are you, are you, um, you can voting? Just, just there's, a, there's a seat there. If you can, please, we, you can have a seat if you're a voting member. So can I have somebody, can I have one of the assistants to help me? Can you help me? Are you, yeah? Please, please just count the, num the number of presents here. That's, that's fine. That's fine. If you don't have Ames, Ames ID, you're fine. It's fine. You're, you're, as long as you're, you're, you, live in, you live in Canada, you reside in Canada now, right? Yeah, yeah. Yes, that's fine. So that's fine. You're eligible. There's no other, there's no other criteria. But you don't have to leave Ames ID, no standard requirements for now. Later on, inshallah, we'll bring those in. But for now, who's we'll instruction that leave all those things aside. Just good on and answer our members for now. Everybody's eligible. If you're present, you're eligible. Yes, of course, you can propose names for some, somebody who's not here, of course, as long as they live in Canada. So, how many? 28. 28 people. Yeah, is that include yourself? No. You're, you, okay, right, it doesn't include. Okay, I have a pen. Pen? I don't pen, have a pen. I lost, I lost my pen somewhere. My pen went okay. it was okay. No, so, 28, there's a command. So, 28 members present. Okay, so without any further ado, all I need now is the nominations of. Um, nominations for the office of president. So you just you just raise your hand simply, and then you just I'll ask you to to mention your name, and then and then the person you want to, to nominate. So I think start at the back. You what? My name is Ashraf Ramjan. Yes. I would like to nominate Mommy Sukia. Mommy Sukia, nominated by Raja. Ashraf Ramjan. Ashraf Ram. John. Okay. Any second? Uh, can I anybody second in that? Anybody second in Mumim Sukia? Tahe. Nurali. I'll get the correct spellings from you guys from you afterwards. Why is there any photographer here? Oh, can we have somebody uh, take somebody or oh, is anybody taking pictures? And just use your iPhone if you have. Anybody can take pictures because we need, uh, need uh, there's a reason why I need the photos. Yes? I need Iran Yes? Iran Iman. C H E A Z O S. T O S. Yes? And your nominee? Khamis. Khamis. Khamis got so name? Khamis. Khamis, what's your son name? Kami Salam. Any second? Okay. Mumin Sukia. Anybody else? We need one more. Yes? Oh, Abrugani. Yes, I'll use Abrugani for now. <laughs> and Abdul Sabu. Abdul Sabu. And any second for Abdul Sabu? Anybody second the, no the nomination of Abdul Sabu? No second, we have to withdraw the name. Okay, the name is withdrawn. Um, you want to nominate? Abdul Ghani. That's him? That's you, okay. So you're Abdul Ghani or you're Abdul Ghani as well? Omokai. Uma. Yeah? Omokai. Omokai? Yeah. Omokai. Omokai. Okay. And nominated by Hamis Salam. Hamis. Okay. Okay. Two members from Mauritius just walked in. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. We have to, I'm told I have two members from Mauritius. Are they, are, um, Hamid Rasab, are you going to join us? Yes. Please. Um, who, was, who was your second one? Because we haven't started the election just so, so I, can, I can allow you to participate in the election. Please, if you can sit on this side. That's, that makes our, our quorum 30. Oh, no, our... Yeah, our... No, no problem. I, I heard about that. Can you sit on this side, please? 
So can I have some more chairs there? So, uh, one second, I, uh, Hamis Salam proposed Abrogani Omakayo Kai. Anybody, can anybody second that? Is anybody second, seconding Abru, Abrogani, the nomination? Sorry, so I have a comment, please, if you don't mind. You see, we are from few friends and country, so we don't know who is voting who, and so if the country is together, some of them we know, but we don't know even the names. Yes. I understand. We'll do that at the, when we have received all the nominations. That's a, that's a standard procedure. After all the nom nominations are received, before voting commences, I'll ask all the members to stand up. Yeah? So anybody second any nomination of Abdul Ghani, proposed by Khamis? Yeah? You nominate him? So I'm seconding, yeah? And you're Abdul Ghani as well. I'll take your last name like, later on. Anybody else? Abdul is it two people? Uh, One person. Uh, Abdul, uh, that's your name? That's you? Uh, yeah, I've got many names. Yeah. <laughs> so which, which name should I put down? Abdul Rahman. Abdul Rahman. <laughs> sorry, what's your surname? Abdul Rahman Abdul Hamid. That's why I was confused. Abdul Rahman Abdul Hamid. Okay, mashallah. Okay, proposed by. Faisal, D O O L L A H, -H Sudula. Okay. Any second of Abdullah? Yeah. Abdullah, any second? Yes. Okay. Okay. We have. I've got to remove one. We have four nominations so far. Anybody else nominated? Anybody else want to nominate anybody else? Okay, if no other nominee, we have four nominations. Can I ask Mumin Sukia, please stand up? So Mumin Sukia, Mumin Sukia is nominated by Ashad Vaj, Vaj, Vamjon and seconded by Tahi Nuwali. Yes? The second nomination is Khamis Salam, please. Khamis Salam is proposed by Imran Chados. Yes? And um, seconded by Mumin Sukia. The third nomination, Abdul Ghani Amukai, proposed by Khami Salam, and seconded by Abdul Ghani as well. And finally, Abdul Rahman Abdul Hamid, proposed by Faisal Subula, Sudula, and uh, seconded by Abdul Ghani. Yes, uh, Hamid Lassa, please. Please, if you just uh, stand, just stand. Yes, so, yeah. So the fourth nomination, Abdul Rahman Abdul Hamid. So is everybody seeing the nominations? So now you're free to vote, one vote each. For one person, I'll come, I'll, I'll, I'll come. so please, we are only, you're only allowed to vote for one person, so please vote, cast your vote once. You cannot vote for yourself, and if you nominated somebody or seconded somebody, you have to vote for that person. And so it's important, so the votes have to tally. You have a question? If you don't know, then may Allah guide you. You have to vote. <laughs> so make a choice, pray, and Allah, Allah will guide you. <laughs> you have to. Yeah, you have to. Yes. That's already the rules. It's a, it's, it's, it's a, it's if, with the permission of the chair, you can make a few, few words in favor. Obviously, not against. You know this already. You cannot say any, any word against, but you can say a few words in favor of any of the four proposed candidates. You, what you wish to? Please. Assalamu uh, alaikum wa rahmatullah. Mr. Chair, I wanted to uh, recommend uh, Mr. Abdul Ghani Sahib. Uh, many people see him only once a year or twice a year when he comes from for Jalsa from uh, Calgary. Which, which one? Oh. Uh, Mr. Abdul Ghani. You, Abdul, Mr. Abdul Ghani. Yeah. And uh, he's a very active member of the Jamaat. Uh, his children are attached to the Jamaat, and I think uh, we have seen that spirit of Islam in of Ahmadiyat in Africa, here in, in, in Canada, brought by the gentleman. He's got the passion, and I think he's got the, the build and the leadership to take this organization to the level that it has the potential to go to. So we'd recommend him. Jazakumullah. 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 What's the name again? Abdul Ghani. Oh. What, sorry, what? Joyce, I want to talk about the favor of what okay. I am doing. 
Sorry, my English is not good. No so I chose the name of uh, Hamis because uh, more, I know him almost 10 years ago now. He's a very active member. Always I saw him. He's also Sadasab of uh, Ottawa. So mashallah, he's involved. All his family is involved, his wife and everything. He always asked me to worry about Parma Africa a long time ago. He always talked to me how to build Parma Africa here in Canada. That's why I chose him. Yes, Yes, Abdul uh, Hamis, you, want to, you also want to say a few words about somebody else? <laughs> Everybody's passing the book here. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi I want to speak in favor of uh, Abdul Daniel Mokai. Um, a few years ago, uh, the issue of uh, Palmer also came, and which is one of the things that is, he mentioned. And uh, with his effort and some other brothers here in the uh, Toronto area, we were able to set up uh, at least to start with a kind of a WhatsApp group with his effort. And we've also been, uh, he's been trying to guide us to see how we can establish Bama. And uh, Alhamdulillah, Allah accepted our prayer. And then you are here today to inaugurate him. So I believe he is very active, just like uh, Brother Abdul Rahman has said. And he has the passion for to serve the Jamaat. Not only that, he's also the Sadar Jamaat for the Fort McMurray Day. Uh, he's been serving Jamaat not only in Canada, while, while he was in Nigeria, to also, he was also very active. And he was also in Naib Amir in Nigeria, taking very active part in the service of Jamaat. Jazakumullah. Okay. There you go. So you did it. now you know, at least you have some introduction to some members for those of you who are, who are not familiar with other people, so nominees, as you say. So now by the grace of Allah, you've had some introduction to some of the members. So please make up your mind now. As I says, one vote each. Uh, can you help me count again, please? So it's, uh, we have 30 members now. Yes, yeah, it should be 30 votes. So everybody should vote once. So we should have 30 votes in total. So please make sure you nominate somebody, you vote for that person, or a second, you vote for that person. And again, one vote each. So all those in favor of Mumin Sukia, please raise your, raise your right hands. All those in favor, this is voting now, please. All those in favor of Mumin Sukia as president of Palmer Canada, please raise your, your hands. Can you please help me count? Are you voting? Two. All those in favor of Khami Salam, please raise your right hands. I think it's six. Can, can, you, can you please raise your hands again? There's some discrepancy. Okay. That's, that's five, yeah? That is five. That's five. Okay. All those in favor of Abdul Ghani? Fifteen. So, and, eh? I think it's more. And I more? counted more. Can we can we raise your hands again, please? Hi, hi, no. Please, dollars in favor of Ab Abu Ghani. Eighteen. 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 Was put at Imam Diba. And finally, all those in favor of Abdul Rahman, Abdul Hamid, please raise your right hands. That is four, that's uh, 22, 24, 29. One person did not vote. <laughs> oh, okay, so, okay, so fine, okay, cool. So there's 29 people, not 30. Okay, so 29 votes in members present, and we have 29 votes in total. Jazakumullah, gentlemen, congratulations. You comp completed this important exercise, like I said, um, next weekend, I'm in France for Palma France. I'll do the same, conduct the same exercise there. And at the end of, in two weeks' time, I'll inshallah, with, if permission is granted, I'll have an audience with Huzu, present him the results. But I need a photograph. Please, can you take a photograph of all the four nominees? Can somebody, can somebody help me with this? Just take a portrait picture, because what I normally do, because obviously Huzu will not be familiar with you, maybe by name, but if he sees the face, he may, to may trigger his memory. So I normally in my results, I, pre I present the photos to Huzu. So please help me, uh, not now, but after. After, please oh. make sure you take a picture uh, so I can include that in my, in my, in my report when I, when I go to Huzu. So, okay, Jazakallah, that concludes the formal proceedings of the elections. But now we're going to have a, a, an address by our respected president of Palma USA, Murabi Sisila, Imam Abdullah Diba Sahib. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ahdahu la sharika la. Wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh. 
أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم I just uh, want to have a small exercise just to um, release the tension a little bit because um, you've seen that amazing presentation that was just done by President Saab of Palmer UK. And um, there's a lot of things that definitely going through your minds right now. So just to have a little exercise of three volunteers, if you can share with us what's going through your mind right now. Just three people that can just raise your hand and share with us in a few words what is going through your mind after seeing their presentation and doing the exercise of the election. Three people. And from the lady's side, we'll take two people to also share. Yes, please. Uh, first of all, I can imagine it because uh, this is an exciting moment right now. So I already attend Parma meeting in UK. You know, two, three, two, three times. So I was always thinking about how Parma can be established where I'm living. Mm -hmm. So how to go far from away my country to to attend, you know, Parma right. in, uh, you know, in you know, outside from my country in UK. Right. So now when I see, you know, the meeting Parma established here, mm -hmm. this is the amazing moment for me. Watch and then also my fellow brother who live in France, because I have been in France for more than 12 years or so, mm -hmm. they are all, always exciting to, you know, to see that moment. Watch you know. It's coming there too, inshallah. Yes, Zalkum Allah. yes please. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum You can come to the mic so the ladies can hear you as well. Um, my, my feeling is quite similar to uh, the last person. Um, I've been living in UK for more than a decade, and I was quite active with, with Palmer over there as well. Uh, moving over to Canada was a bit strange. Um, not having that connection, particularly during the jazz time, having the meeting, seeing people that look like you. Mm. Uh, we are all Amadis, we are brothers, but there's still some familiarity with people that you're much closer to, mm -hmm. particularly when you are doing certain things. And it has always been one of my own personal um, agenda um, to sort of have this kind of um, organization that is well blessed by uh, the Uzuru himself. Um, we try on our part as, uh, I'm a Nigerian, so I do have Nigerian colleagues and brothers that we do meet and do things together. But that's not as broad as in having the, the whole African uh, in a single, unit uh, as Palmer we do. Mm -hmm. And uh, that feeling of not just being by yourself, having that knowledge of Palmer being in UK, being in France, being in the US, that sort of give you some sort of uh, grand as an Amadi. Mm -hmm. uh, it further emphasize your, your belief in the Amadi. And that's the sort of feelings that I have at this particular moment. Mashallah. Any from the ladies? Any thoughts? Could someone tell us what, they, uh, what their thoughts are? Just one volunteer. Is anyone up to the mic there? Or? No? OK, one, one last one. And then I'll keep it short, short and sweet, inshallah, so we can. Assalamualaikum. First of all, it's already a blessed uh, organization view that Huzur has approved that. And also, I speak under correction, there is a mention in our history that Khilafat will be established or Khilafat will be in Africa. So I speak under correction, I have heard that. So inshallah, this will be also a platform that Islam and Ahmadiyyat will really flourish under this. MashaAllah. Okay. So, so one thing, yes, there's one. Okay, one, one, one legend member. Is this working? Oh my God. Asalaamu As Alaikum. Wa Alaikum As Salaam wa um, Well, I'm very impressed that um, finally this uh, forum for Africans outside the continent of Africa. Um, I'm not too impressed with the fact that there was exclusion, and I think I fall in 
that category, but perhaps I can protest that. Um, I think the sisters are very keen and um, look very uh, happy to have this say. I think eventually this will launch something much greater and uh, it's good to know that uh, we're finally on the map and one um, strong point is uh, between the Pakistanis and Indians to finally find Africans being a minority and having a say. I think this is really fantastic. So, inshallah, let's hope we move forward in a positive way. Inshallah. Jazakumullah for sharing those testimonies. And the reason why I've asked people to come up and share their thoughts and what they feel about what they've seen is that initially, it, um, and I'm telling you about my own experience, where you see a presentation like this, you know, this took four years, of course, um, for an, a whole administration to bring it from one level, from scratch, to something where they can present something where you can see results, measurable goals, and the Khalifa sees involvement in it. Um, this is to remind us that we're not expecting every year or every six months or every three months for someone to come from outside to come and start this, to get this started. That's not what it is. From today moving forward, the people that are here in this room are the ones that are going to make the history. There's no one coming from outside to tell you what to do. The decisions that you're making from this day is what will make your history. This is what will leave the legacy. It sounds or it looks overwhelming and difficult, but I chose a verse of the Holy Quran to remind all of us that humble beginnings do not mean that we're doomed to fail. Even though you look left, right, some of us may be thinking, well, maybe someone else will do it because I am not capable of doing it. Who takes the lead? Or do we leave it on the shoulders of one person? That is not how it works. And this exercise that prophets have gone through throughout their lives, throughout the history of mankind, keeps repeating itself. And God Almighty tells us that in the Holy Quran. And it's about Hazrat Hud in chapter 11, verse 28. A dialogue was happening between Hazrat Lut and his people. They were looking at him in a certain way, and he was responding in a certain way, based on their observation. The verse 28 is, in our view, we find only low and insignificant people as your followers. This is the people who are telling Hazrat Hud this. None of our learned, rich, and honorable persons follows you. What superiority? if any, do you have over us? How can we take him who is a leader of the poor, the weak, the low, and the distressed, and his followers as better or greater than us? This is what the disbelievers were telling Hazrat Hud. So under the circumstances, they say, we are compelled to conclude that you are a liar. You will fail. You will not succeed. Were you a truthful person, people with honor, and dignity, powerful leaders, and great nations on earth would have followed you. This is the dialogue that Hadad Hud had with his people. And what he tells him is a longer um, narration. But this just tells you that whenever there is a group of people that challenges a certain person who is claiming to be working for the sake of God Almighty, these words are always repeated. They're looking for the most famous, the most powerful, the most influential to be part of a group in order for it, for it to succeed. But Hazrat Hud, his example, and the example of even the Holy Prophet wasallam, was that the most insignificant people that we see in the society, the person who we think is not qualified, is not smart enough, cannot make presentations, cannot even write an email, how can he lead us to this success? So that is the mentality that we should get rid of from this room today. Because at the time of the Holy Prophet وسلم, when he was talking about the victory of Islam, the disbelievers thought he was mad. Because those humble companions who never even have food to eat, people like Abu Huraira who would be so hungry that he would go unconscious in the streets, these were the people that sat on dry mats and the roofs of their mosques were leaking. And they talked about conquering the world. And the disbelievers thought, these people are crazy. We're talking about the kings of the Khosrows and the Roman Empire. 
These are the powerful people, the Persian empires. And these insignificant people are sitting in Medina, they run away from Makkah, and they're talking about conquering the world. They must be crazy. Something must be going on in their heads. And after 22 years, 23 years, the Holy Prophet ﷺ passed away. They said, look at these jokers. They, they can't even go out of Medina. Their master has died. They have no leader. Who are they? What are they thinking about? But those companions had faith. They had taqwa. They had righteousness. And they had prayers. So this room looks small right now. Maybe 25, 30 people who are voting today. Or maybe 50 people, if you include people who are absent, could have voted. But the beginnings are humble. But that is not our destination. The history that will be made if everyone in this room today walked out of this room with that unity that we talked about right in the beginning of the presentation, to unite, to empower, and to inspire. If you all walked away carrying that responsibility on our shoulders and praying day in, day out, there is no reason why Palmer will not succeed in this country. There is no reason why you cannot be part of a history where Palmer is being established in another country. That was the spirit that was followed in UK four years ago, which is why Hazrat Khalifa al Masih has sent Tommy Kalam Saab just after four years to go to Belgium to establish Parma, to go to Italy to establish Parma, to go to USA to establish Parma, to come to Canada to establish Parma, and then France, and then Germany. Within a period of four years, if that hope wasn't there, if the prayer wasn't there, right now it would have been probably only in London. But when that zeal is carried from that day, from the first day, we show confidence that the companions showed that this is a mission that the Prophet of God wants, or the representative of the Prophet of God wants, that's the Khalifa al-Masih, who has put his energy and his resources in it, there is no reason why it will not succeed. But it needs your commitment from day one. It needs you to feel that responsibility and the willingness to serve your people and your faith. That is what carries this flag into the message of Ahmadiyyat. All of us understanding that the only hope that the world has today is the leadership of Khilafat. And who it is that will take this message to the people that have come from Africa, of African origin. We all know what's happening around the world. When the color of a person is black, everyone turns away from them. If there is only hope for our people to establish or to experience true freedom, it's only through Khalifa al Masih's leadership and who it is that can bring them to that flag for them to be under the shadow of God Almighty, as he says. It's you people. So I'll conclude by reminding or sharing my own personal story when I was given the responsibility of taking the role of president in Palma, where you know, everyone would say he's a young person, in, my whole, in the whole executive, I'm the youngest. I have people that are 65, 70 years old. But that again reminds us of the spirit of leadership because we have obedience. And that is because this person has been appointed by Khalifa al Masih. So that is the spirit that we all need to leave this room with. And I had the same feelings that some of you may be having right now. How can I do this? But when you're sincere and you pray hard, and you have the willingness to take this role, not to want an office, not to want to lead, but just to have that sincerity and to pray and be part of this legacy. There's no reason why God Almighty would not bless all of us. So there's no need to be nervous. There will be challenges in the beginning. It would look almost impossible sometimes, but the goal is always to replicate something that has already succeeded. succeeded. And the best example right now is what UK is doing, Palma UK of the experience, the history, and of course the direct leadership of Khalifa al Masih. So I will humbly request all of us that from this day, from tomorrow, from every day from now, we'll be looking forward to the success stories of what you will establish in Canada from this day, inshallah, for your children to follow. May Allah Almighty enable all of us to follow in those right footsteps behind the leadership of Khalifa al Masih so we can make this a success, not only in Canada, but also other countries to follow, inshallah. Jazakumullah, Imam Diba Sahib. 
Um, I will, will now conclude with my uh, final address, and then uh, Imam Sabu will lead us in silent prayer. Um, before I deliver my address, I just want to thank uh, our lady who contributed, and uh, she gave me the opportunity to, again, reaffirm and clarify that uh, when we say exclusions, we do so on instructions. In my very first mulakat, I was also um, conflicted because there were so many members in, Af in, in UK who are born in Africa and who want to be members of Parma, so I sought direct guidance from Huzu on this very question. And it was on Huzu's instructions that he said we should not include um, those who are born and bred in Africa of, African, of Indian and Pakistani origin. Again, he gave his own son's example. He said, my own son, Wakas, was born in Ghana, but otherwise he'll, he'll, he'll also be a member. But like I said, that's only for the purpose of such need. For every other purpose, you are most welcome. Those members who are born in Africa and know they have love for Africa. My own first cousin sitting here, Ismail, was born in Ghana, grew up in Ghana. Are you born in Ghana or you grew up in Ghana? You, you, okay. you, grew up, you went to Ghana when you were a very young age, and you grew up in Ghana for the live up till this year, he's lived in, or last year, he lived in Ghana. He wanted to be on this side, we asked him to move on that side to save himself from embarrassment. But um, uh, there's a long story why he's my cousin. In long story, thought my grandfather was from Pakistan, so his, his mother and my mother are sisters. I know he loves Ghana, he loves Africa. I know he will serve Parma, so he'll be involved in Parma. But for purposes of such need, we don't count those who are not of African origin, true African origin, indigenous African origin. Otherwise, my sister, you're free to join us on every other occasion, participate in all activities, support and sponsor all, everything we do. You're most welcome, and we, we, we welcome you. In fact, I get this all the time in the UK, believe it or not. So many members want to be part of Palma, and even sometimes people come to me and joke, what are you feeding these Palma members? Everybody wants to be part of Palma for now. So, yeah, <laughs> even my own wife as well, she's also non-African, non, non but also, again, she's not, again, she's not on the need, but again, she attends all events, she, she attends all programs, and she participates fully in all, in, in all programs. So yeah, like I said, it's only for the purpose of counting it as you need, they're excluded. And all, all, for all other purposes, they're most welcome to join us and participate fully in all our activities. So please, you're most welcome to join us. Jazakumullah. Ashahadu an la ilaha illallahu wahdahu la sharika lahu wa ashahadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu amma ba'du fa'udhu billahi mina shaytani rajim Bismillahi Rahmani Rahim. Most worthy President Parma UK, Parma USA. Dear sisters and brothers, honored guests, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Let me start by recording my profound gratitude and appreciation to respected Amir Sahib Canada for the kind invitation extended to, extended to my humble self to participate in this blessed Jaza Salana Canada for the purposes of inaugurating the Canadian chapter of the Pan-African Ahmadiyya Muslim Association. I must also express my sincere thanks to Naib Amir, Farhan Kuka Sahib, and all the many members of, of the Jaza Salana Canada team who have been on hand to facilitate all modalities required for this event. Most of all, I am indeed humbled by the enormous confidence reposed in me by Hazrat Khalifa Tumasi, the fifth Ayadullah Uttala bin Aswil Aziz, in graciously granting his blessed approval for me to attend this Jasa Salana and this launch event. May Allah bless all those who organize this event and may he reward all who now attend it. Amen. It is indeed Khilafat, that blessed rope of Allah, which unites all of us, Ahmadi Muslims, no matter our backgrounds. And for this, we must always remain in humble prostrations of gratitude at the threshold of Allah the Almighty. Unit, unity is indeed the theme I would repeatedly return to in my short address this afternoon. But as we gather here today on this historic occasion to officially launch 
the Pan-African Ahmadiyya Muslim Association Canada, with the blessings of Khilafat, permit me please, further to my presentation earlier, to say a few words by way of introduction, guidance, and admonition. The Pan-African Ahmadiyya Muslim Association, or PAMA, as it is known, has as its mission statement to unite, empower, and inspire the African Ahmadiyya Muslim diaspora to serve the religion of Islam, the interests of society, and the continent of Africa. It facilitates and oversees the educational, moral, and social welfare of its members and carries out programs designed to engender a spirit of brotherhood and sisterhood amongst its members. It also seeks to propagate the message of Islam Ahmadiyat as well as to create a platform where African Ahmadi Muslims can engage and exchange ideas with the intellectual elite of the African diaspora with a view to finding common grounds to enlighten the people of Africa in religious affairs and secular matters. Based on these broad objectives, if we were to flourish and prosper here in Canada and indeed elsewhere in the world, our commitment must be a binding one. For while ours, as you just heard from Imam Dibba Sahib, is a glorious journey that will, inshallah, under the guidance of Khalifa to Masi, be victorious, we indeed face challenges of variety and volume. Our purpose, our objective, and our mission statement remain lofty and transcendental. Our raison d'etre is to seek out and gather the lost lions of Africa, those of our African brethren lost in Western society, either to the struggle for survival or in pursuit of pleasure. Our purpose is to return to Allah and to take with us the vast multitude of Africans caught up in a nexus of materialism and irreligion found obtaining in Western society. Our objective is to preach in the face of hatred, opposition, and bigotry, the Islam of peace, the Islam of justice, and the Islam of truth. Our mission is to come together as one unified body to propagate by our words and actions the teachings of the Holy Prophet وسلم, and his grand spiritual son, the promised Messiah وسلم, through the efforts of the Pan-African Ahmadiyya Muslim Association. As respected Amir Saib Canada mentioned in his enlightening address last night, 418 souls have laid down their lives in the cause of Ahmadiyyat since the Jamaat was founded. I would be very surprised if any one of them was African. So, we have seen our brothers and sisters facing persecution in Pakistan and other parts of the world standing tall and standing firm. We have seen them raise the standards of sacrifice and righteousness to ultimate levels by laying down their lives in the cause of the Ahmadiyyat. Now, therefore, seeking honest purpose, we Ahmadi Muslims of African provenance must strive to emulate their spirit, sacrifice, and steadfastness, and leave no stone unturned in our humble efforts to further the mission of the promised Messiah and to disseminate the pristine message of Islam Ahmadiyyat through this Pan-African Ahmadiyya Muslim Association founded for those very purposes. We Ahmadis of African provenance must strive to, leave, to lead virtuous lives in keeping with the noble aims and aspirations of our Jamaat and this association established to serve it. We Ahmadis of African provenance must stand upright, resolute, and determined to reform ourselves, to reinforce righteousness, and to defend the dignity of Africa. We Ahmadis of African provenance must continue in our lofty ambition of bringing hope, guidance, and enlightenment to Africa, a continent in pursuit of progression, in search of salvation, and in need of emancipation. It is, no doubt, a very tall order. In a fallen and decrepit social order, you must incite society to climb moral and spiritual heights. In a depraved and morally debased society, you must enliven their spiritual faculties so that they are determined to carry out a spiritual revolution, both inside themselves and in the world around them. In a culture tainted by the cancer of corruption, we must strive to instill in Africans the virtues of piety, honesty, and absolute justice so that they can reform themselves and transform 
the world around them. It is, as I said, a very tall order. Yet, these must be the aims and objectives of Palmer. For, founded in divine wisdom through the instrumentality of Khilafat, we are too celestial a body to limit ourselves to diminutive goals. Our mission statement should be no hollow strap line or credo of convenience. On the contrary, we must seek to propound this tenet, not merely in words, but as part of the very genetic constitution which permeates our every action. It should be the guiding principle which inspires social, moral, and spiritual edification, which induces a measure of character into each and every one of us, and which instills in us, as enjoying by our faith, love for and loyalty to the country where we live and to the continent of Africa. We must cast off and discard everything which disunites us and hold on to, our, to the values which unite us. Just as the rainbow is made up of different hues and colors and yet remains so beautiful and so harmonious that the lines of demarcation between the individ individual colors totally, totally disappear and yet one can still identify the individual colors. So too can all members of Parma and indeed the Jamaat, all members of the Jamaat maintain our various national identities and yet remain united under one umbrella association and under one Jamaat. As the civil wars and internal strife in our, diverse, in our diverse continent and complicated world seek to divide us, we the members of the Pan-African Ahmadiyya Muslim Association must endeavor to transcend man-made differences and bring harmony where there is discord, brotherhood where there is enmity, and unity where there is division. Let us take every opportunity to advance the cause of our Jamaat and the welfare of Africa. Let us take every opportunity to relieve poverty, sickness, and suffering of those affected. Let us, in the discharge of our, du of our duty to God and his creation, take every opportunity to sustain our determination and our courage, to renew our fervor and our dedication, to nourish our spirits and our faith, so that the elusive dream of a united and prosperous Africa, enlightened and illumined by the light of Ahmadiyyat, can be transformed from a hollow yearning to a glowing reality. When our beloved Khalifa, addressing the Palmer UK Africa's 50 event in 2011, made a profound remark, I truly believe that the time is fast approaching for Africa to lead the world. He went on to say that we must strengthen our ties with our creator, make excellent plans to achieve higher levels of progress, develop an atmosphere of mutual love, and affection and uphold the human values of mankind. Today, as we formally launch Palmer Canada with the blessed approval of our Khalifa, I call upon all members of Palmer Canada to commit to a revitalized awareness of our purpose and seeking neither office nor title. Be ever ready to expend your time and resources in its cause. My dear sisters and brothers, the future, progress, and ultimate victory of Palmer Canada is now in your collective hands. You must neither shirk nor evade this sacred responsibility. You must neither violate nor desecrate this sacred trust. May Allah so ordain and bless you all profoundly. Thanks for having me. Wassalamu alaikum. Jazakumullah. We now conclude silent prayers. Imam Diba Sahib will lead us in silent prayer. Jazakumullah. Dua.
Jazak um, We'll kind of request members of Ghanaian, Ghana contingency or anybody else to lead us in uh, song, songs of praise. La, 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 la. Anybody want to lead us for, to close the event? Traditional? Tivana, collectively. Please feel free. It doesn't, it doesn't need to be Ghanaian, but the Ghanaian Tivana is very popular. Please come. Come lead us. You can. Please. Yeah, please, can do it down there. Just do it down there. Take it away, boys, as they say. food arrangements now, so please help yourselves to some food. Let decide as well, there should be some food in your side, so please help yourselves. Jazakum Allah for your attendance. Please continue to pray for Palmer. Jazakum Allah.